everybody, my name is Chris. Welcome to the third and final installment of Smell Expensive on a Budget. This is a series I started back in 2021. I think it was April 2021 was my first episode. I had a second episode about a year ago and I promised a third episode and here we are one year later for the third and final installment of smell expensive on a budget. I have smelled hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of fragrances that are very affordable looking for that diamond in the rough. Along the way I have found many many hidden gems and I have spoken about some of these gems in prior videos which I will link below if you are new. I think we all know that the price tag of a fragrance doesn't always dictate how a fragrance is going to perform or how good a fragrance is going to smell. I have very expensive fragrances that don't last very long and I have fragrances that I have been disappointed in one way or another. But I have chosen 10 fragrances here that out of all the fragrances I have tested are the best of the best for $60 and below. I tried not to do any duplicating. I think I might have one or two crossovers and even though this is a top 10 video, I have about five honorable mentions, all of which I have mentioned before, but I wanna make sure I go over one more time because I think they are phenomenal fragrances for the price. And with that, I'm gonna jump right in. Okay, so for the honorable mentions we have Roberto Covale Paradiso. I love this fragrance. It is a citrusy, jasmine, woody fragrance, and it is one of the very few fragrances with a prominent note of jasmine that I absolutely adore. It's very citrusy and fresh in the top. There is a smooth, soft jasmine, and in the base there is a really nice cypress note, a woody cypress note. This fragrance was about $30 and lasts eight to 10 hours on skin and days on clothes. So honorable mention number one. Number two, I could have easily put in today's video. It is by Juicy Couture and this is Majestic Woods. I stand behind this one. This is a sweet woody fragrance with amber, with praline, and some strong woody notes. Oud's not listed. I definitely get an oud, but it's a beginner oud. This is a lovely fragrance, particularly for Juicy Couture. Lasting power, siage, everything is great. I still love this one. The third one is one I talk about all the time. I haven't spoken about it recently because I just kind of, I talked about it a lot when I first had my channel and it got oversaturated on the airways, but I still think it's a beautiful fragrance. It is Rare Tiffany by Afnon. The bottle is beautiful. This is a musky, watery, floral, woody fragrance. It can be worn year round, dressed up, dressed down, this is a beast, this lasts all day. And for the $30 I paid, it is absolutely phenomenal. Fourth one is one I talk about all the time. I still love this fragrance. It is Trusardi Donna by Trusardi. This is the EDP. I wasn't as impressed with the EDT. It is a citrusy floral musk. When I purchased it about two, three years ago, this was $30. It is just a lovely spring and summer fragrance. And there are a couple celebrities, I think, wear this as their signature scent. If you like those notes, it is a lovely, lovely fragrance for the price. And finally, a fragrance oil. I don't like oils, I don't like rollerballs. This fragrance oil is a banger. It is by Nemat Vanilla Musk. This smells a lot like the very expensive fragrance Tihota. This will get you about 80% there. This is a musky, gourmandy, vanilla type oil. It is beautiful. Three, four drops of this. This will last all day. You will just smell like a delicious vanilla cookie. So this is a fabulous Tihota alternative for those who enjoy oils. This is about the fourth one I've purchased. I've given it away to friends. This is the second one I have personally, and I get mine at Whole Foods. They sell this line at Whole Foods. Okay, so now into the top 10. And these are in no particular order. The one I have in my hand is the only one that has made one of the prior videos, but I just wanted to include it because it's just that good in my opinion. And it is Quasimat Rosanna by Rosasi. The bottle is beautiful. This is what I like to refer as the Middle Eastern version of Creed Aventus. This is a very beautiful Middle Eastern fragrance. It is not a dupe of anything. This is a bright citrusy amber fragrance with a Middle Eastern flair. It is one of the few fragrances that is very, it's so refreshing. 
it's almost mouth-watering in the beginning. It has some really lip-puckering citruses. There's lemon, bergamot, there's apple. It's just very, it's just like a burst of freshness. But the amber in here really kind of keeps it from being too tart. As this fragrance kind of develops, it becomes a lot more earthy. It's very woody. There is Cypriot oil. It definitely contributes to some of the earthiness as this dries down. And then Middle Eastern fragrances are known for their musk. This has a very strong musk, but the musk is still accompanied by these woody notes and these fresher notes. This is one of my powerhouse fragrances. This will last you all day. It is a gorgeous, long-lasting fragrance. I think I purchased this for like right at $50. I would have paid three times as much for this gem here. So starting out the list with Quasimat Rosanna. Okay, the next one is a little tester bottle I picked up last year, sometime last year. Haven't managed to talk about it in a video, but it is definitely worth mentioning and it is called Guess Seductive. I don't have a cat because this is a tester, but this is an aromatic floral vanilla. When I first sprayed this, it just seemed very familiar. I know this isn't a dupe for anything, but to me, this is like 90% Mont Guerlain and 80% Angel EDT. I know patchouli is not listed as one of the notes, but I'm telling you, unless my nose has completely failed me, I do detect patchouli in this fragrance. And to me, the patchouli is pretty prominent. Unlike Mont Guerlain that is known for the vanilla, this has sage instead. And also as it dries down, it becomes woodier and drier. There's vetiver. Vetiver smells kind of like a dry grass. On me, it gets sweeter and a little bit drier, probably from amber or vanilla, and definitely the vetiver giving it a little bit of a, a dry grassiness. This lasts a solid six to eight hours and I paid somewhere in the $20 range for my tester bottle. A phenomenal fragrance for the price. Today is September 30th, fall is here. For all you coffee lovers, this is a phenomenal fragrance for what you pay for. It is by Theodorus Calatinus and it is called Coffee Addict. I have spoken about this before. This fragrance, I bought this on sale. He usually has a winter Christmas sale, wink wink. Be on the lookout for that in the next coming months. This is originally runs around 50 to 55 euros, which is basically a one-to-one -one exchange for the US dollar right now. And I bought mine during his Christmas sale. So I got mine for $30 or 33 euros. This is a phenomenal fragrance. And right now is my very favorite coffee fragrance. This is a very gourmand coffee fragrance and hands down one of the best coffee fragrances I have ever tried because I love my gourmands. The notes listed in here are coffee, there's caramel, cacao, chocolate, vanilla, and I can honestly say I detect each and every one of those notes while I'm wearing this fragrance. This to me smells like a slightly charred cafe mocha with caramel, and then you added like a sweet vanilla cream. This is very decadent, very sweet, and for gourmand lovers. If you do not like your really sweet gourmand fragrances, this is probably not going to be up your alley, but for gourmand lovers like myself who also love the note of coffee, this is to die for, and a phenomenal fragrance for what I paid. Lasting power is amazing. Sticking with the gourmand theme is one of my very favorite layering fragrances. It is a gorgeous creamy lactonic fragrance and it is Fresh Cream by Philosophy. This ginormous bottle I think was about $50. This has whipped cream, there's milky notes, this has some fruity notes and some subtle floral notes, but basically what I get is sweetened condensed milk and whipped cream that is slightly powdery. This is very milky and lactonic and for some people these type of fragrances can go sour on your skin. So not for everybody, but this, if you are a gourmand lover like myself, if lactonic and milky fragrances do not turn sour on your skin, this is an utter dream. I wear it by itself, by itself. Lasting power is not great and it's on the softer side, but this is a phenomenal fragrance that I use when I want to add a sweet vanilla gourmand element to a fragrance and I can think of lots of fragrances that I like to layer with this one. A fabulous fragrance that is often overlooked because it's been around for a while, but I still love it. So the next fragrance is by one of my favorite celebrity houses. It is by the house of Elizabeth and James. Now, yes, these fragrances have been discontinued, but they are still very easy to get and still 
very inexpensive. If you ever wanted to buy an Elizabeth James fragrance, now is the time. I just checked last night. Every single one of these in the line is available, I think on at least Fragrance Net, and they're all on clearance. So the way these things go is that they become discontinued, the price drops, and then everybody scrambles to get a bottle, the price goes up, and then you can't find them anymore. I have every single one in the line. This is Nirvana Bourbon. I love several in the line but I think this one just kind of ekes everyone else out because it has pretty good performance and it's just a gorgeous scent for what you pay for. I love Nirvana Black. That is a gorgeous fragrance, but it has terrible lasting power. Otherwise, that would have been in the top 10. This one is a dark, woody vanilla with a boozy tobacco vibe. There is no tobacco in here as a note per se, but I definitely get a tobacco nuance, if you will, in this fragrance. And it's probably from oak. There is oak listed. There are florals, there are white flowers listed. I get zero white flowers, which I think is a good thing. It just, it would change this fragrance into something that I don't want it to be. This is a gorgeous woody vanilla for the fall and the winter, particularly the fall. It's just very cozy and warm and has, the lasting power is just fine. I can get at least four to six hours. It is gorgeous so if you ever wanted to get any in the line now is the time before they sell out love this i love everything about it the sleek packaging and i'm really sad that these were discontinued if you are a return subscriber you will know that one of my favorite notes in a fragrance is vanilla and it's no surprise i have a couple vanillas in this list this next one is one of the most underrated salty vanillas in my collection it is in the quirky and somewhat ugly bottle by Kenzo, and this is Kenzo World Power. This is a sweet, salty, cypressy vanilla. Vanilla, I don't believe, is listed as a note, but I absolutely get this kind of this syrupy vanilla that is very common in the DNA of a lot of very popular designer fragrances. The note that's listed is Tonka, which I do get in the dry down, but I absolutely get this kind of sweet, syrupy vanilla that's not necessarily my favorite type of vanilla, but what makes this unique and what kind of saves it from being a sticky, sweet, run-in-the-mill, everyday vanilla is the added note of cypress. I love cypress. It gives it a nice, fresh, woodiness so cypress in here and i think the addition of cypress and salt makes this a very unique fragrance and gives it a lot of dimension that most other salty vanillas do not have one of my very favorite salty vanillas right here this to me i will be putting away for the fall season you know my salty vanillas i just they're just summertime for me but for all the people who live in a warmer climate warmer states or in the southern hemisphere this is a great one for the warmer months and it was, I think I got it right at $50. So Kenzo World Power. Another beautiful, very affordable vanilla fragrance that is actually quite appropriate for the fall and winter months is Spice and Black Vanilla by Cremo. If you are not aware, Cremo is a shaving company but makes a line of fragrances that I stumbled upon last year. They have several amazing fragrances. This one was $18 and I picked it up at Target. This is an incredible spicy vanilla. The notes are on the box and they are bourbon vanilla, cardamom, and vetiver. This is basically kind of a soft vanilla with chai spices. It's not overly sweet. It is very linear and it is on the soft side. I believe this is an EDT concentration. It's like a 3.4 ounce bottle, $18 for a delicious vanilla that is spectacular for the cold months. And the Cremo line in general is very underrated. They have a couple bangers in there. So last year I talked about Juicy Couture Majestic Woods. This year for a change up, I'm gonna talk about another good Juicy Couture fragrance is Glistening Amber. Like I said in the part two video, I was always shy about trying Juicy Coutures because they just weren't my cup of tea. Most of their fragrances didn't work out for me and they weren't fragrances that I was drawn to. And it wasn't until a lovely friend of mine who is also a creator here on YouTube sent me a bunch of samples from this line. And I was incredibly impressed by what she sent me. My favorite were Majestic Woods and Glistening Amber. This one is the most expensive of the bunch. 
I think I got it right at $60 maybe four or five months ago on Fragrance Nut with a coupon. <laughs> so this is a sweet, woody, spicy, ambery vanilla. About 15 minutes in, I get this really nice smoky, a subtle smokiness from some incense. I get some sort of like rummy sweetness. I don't think there are any boozy notes per se, but I just get this, this kind of sweet, slightly fruity, boozy sweetness. It has a really nice depth to it from one or two different types of wood. I don't know the wood. Sometimes this line just lists woody notes. It has a really nice powderiness in the dry down. It gets more powdery as it dries down and the performance, I would call it moderate, a solid four to six hours. Definitely, in my opinion, one that is more suited to the months we are headed into now, fall and winter, but another one that kind of flies under the radar and a great fragrance. It smells very expensive for a rather affordable price. We're getting down to the final three, and the next one is a celebrity fragrance. I actually found this. I was reading a magazine article like seven years ago, somewhere in that general time frame. The article was about Kate Beckinsale, the actress Kate Beckinsale, and she talked about a fragrance that she was wearing at the time, and both her and her husband loved, and it was surprisingly by Jessica Simpson, and it was fancy and it was at that time I kind of started it was on my radar at the time and then I was at TJ Maxx not that long after and came upon it and bought a couple of gift sets for like nieces and friends and then I bought a bottle for my young daughter who at the time was in grade school thinking that she was like me and loved fragrances at a young age and the bottle kind of sat there and gathered dust in fact I think I bought several flankers or several Jessica Simpson fragrances and she just wasn't really into fragrances like I was at her age. And one by one she gave away each fragrance to a cousin, but she kept fancy around. I remember seeing this on her dresser about a year ago. When I went to go retrieve it, I didn't see it and she had subsequently told me one of her friends had taken it about a year ago. So I found a bottle and bought it for like $22. This is a fun, whimsical, fruity, ambery vanilla. It's fruity at first from, I know pear, pear and maybe some other berry. It is very sweet. This has caramel, this has ambery notes, some non-specific floral notes. I don't get a floral per se, but there is some sort of like that designer sweet floral in the background. It's not overly floral. The dry down becomes softer, it becomes more powdery. The fruity notes kind of subside and then it just stays this ambery vanilla, which to me is one of the better celebrity fragrances on the market. But you do have to like your sweet ambery vanilla fragrances, but if you like that kind of fragrance, it's hard to beat this one right here. The next one is definitely one of my favorite fragrances in this list. A fragrance I will be wearing in the fall because it has it has a gorgeous note of apple, one of the most sophisticated, beautiful, deep, and rich smelling fragrances. So this fragrance is unbelievably affordable for what you get. It is Apple and Aces by Genre Fragrances. I love the note of apple in fragrances, particularly in the fall. This is a very realistic, juicy, and crisp red apple. There is a sweetness from pear. There are two types of spirits. There's rum and cognac, and there is a leather note, which gives it a lot of depth, a lot of warmth, and moves it out of kind of the whimsical, fruity fragrance and kind of anchors it right in the unisex, very sophisticated for what you get fragrance. It's boozy and leathery, but the leather is like that perfect leather. It's like that brand new leather bag. There's nothing animalic. Sometimes the leathery fragrances can smell a little bit burned or burned rubber. There's none of that in here. It's smooth, boozy, fruity, gorgeousness, and dries into this leathery amber vanilla. It is just to die for. It is a fabulous fragrance. I think this ran me right at $50. And if you like those type of notes, I cannot recommend this fragrance more. And the last one for the right person is the biggest sleeper of the bunch. I have one of my loyal subscribers, my loyal viewers to thank for this 
her name well she goes by seeking star water and in one of my videos she said chris you need to get this fragrance and of course i did she's so sweet she has sent me decancer fragrances i have never heard of and i've never heard anyone else talk about so she knows a lot of hidden gems. This one is Courtesan by Worth. I've never seen anyone talk about this one. This is a very unique gourmand fragrance that smells nothing like I have in my collection. This is not for the faint of heart. It starts off a very overripe pineapple that is studded with cloves and has a pretty healthy dusting of cinnamon. So we're gonna start off, it starts off in that direction. It has a spiciness. There is cardamom in here, which I feel is pretty detectable. Somewhere in the middle of the fragrance journey, there are florals. This has like 50 notes. This smells like a classic 90s fragrance, very rich, very complicated, full of a lot of notes, a lot going on. So it take, this fragrance definitely takes me on a journey. So we start off fruity with some cloves, with some spices, with some cinnamon, with some cardamom. Then we go into some florals. There's all sorts of florals. I think the one floral that I could detect was rose, but it's really kind of buried in these other notes. And the dry down goes even more gourmandy. I get a chocolatey cacao, like a cacao dusted raspberry. So there's a lot of gourmand notes in the base. I want to say there's cacao, chocolate, caramel and raspberries. Raspberry fruity notes are typically in the top. This one is in the base, so it's very gourmand in the dry down. It's not overly sweet. It still has a tartness, so the raspberry in here is tart, but it's accompanied by these sweeter notes, so it's kind of like the perfect combination. It's not too tart and it's not too sweet. It's not sticky sweet. It has, it's very powerful, and it has this, I would call it a slight vintagey sophistication. I would not recommend blind buying this, but even though for what it is, I think this was another one that ran me somewhere in the $50 category of fragrance net. But oh my goodness, this for the right person, this is phenomenal. And in my opinion, a hidden gem for a unique gourmand fragrance. So that is it, the third and final installment of smell expensive on a budget. And if by some miracle I come across around 10 fragrances that are very affordable, smell a lot more expensive than their asking price, I may come up with another installment in the year 2023. Thanks for stopping by. And if you like what you saw, I am not going to complain if you tap that thumbs up and join my community. And with that, I'll see you on the next one.